friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a mature white cataract with pseudo exfoliation with small people so lot of challenges in this case if the eyelashes are not properly covered cut the lashes flush at the lid margin and thoroughly irrigate the ocular surface with balanced salt solution now this is the incision 2.8 mm main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus and now one paracentesis on the right side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away and stain the anterior capsule with trypan blue dye underneath an air bubble if you stain the anterior capsule underneath an air bubble you will see that staining is immediate and you will get very good staining within 7 or 8 seconds wash the dye out with bss and in this case i have already decided to use a people expansion device and that is b hex invented by dr suben bhattacharji of india the anti chamber is filled off with viscoelastic substance this is another paracentesis on the left side of the main incision and this is the BHEX. If the device goes totally into the anterior chamber, we can tuck the leading flange at on go. But if it doesn't go into the anterior chamber completely, we must place it first in the anterior chamber, then tuck the flanges. Now this is the flange at around 1.30 o'clock or 2 o'clock and it is tucked. Now I go through the left side port and tuck the flange which is at around 10 o'clock. So all the flanges, alternate flanges are tucked and after doing three four cases you will find it very easy to use this device the people takes this beautiful hexagonal shape and it's a very thin device we can use it in very shallow anterior chambers and now I find that the cataract is not much intumescent so I decided to do rexis at on go at this moment we cannot see the hardness of the nucleus but in a moment after cleaning some cortical lens matter will find the hard brown nucleus yes an adequate size rexis has been done and now little bit of hydro dissection is being done in cases with pseudo exfoliation another challenge is weak genual and it was weak in this case and I had to use a CTR which we will see shortly and now I cannot rotate the nucleus and I didn't try to rotate the nucleus with one hand because if we rotate the nucleus with one hand Genular stress is more, but with this bimanual rotation, genular stress is less. 
So in weak journals, please rotate the nucleus bimanually. And now in this case, I have cleaned some superficial cortical matter with Simcoe cannula and now you can see the hard brown nucleus. Nuclear sclerosis will be about grade 4 plus or grade 5 in this case. This clastic substance is injected and now the tip of the FACO handpiece is introduced into the anterior chamber and as usual in such cases I do direct chop in this way which I call submarine chop. Bury the teeth completely into the substance of the nucleus, go through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and reach near the opposite equator and then chop the nucleus and see how beautifully the lens has cracked. And now to get complete division. I rotate the nucleus 180 degree, sculpt a bit, go at a deeper plane, hold the heminucleus on the right side, turning the tip like this and then separate the nucleus in this way. And now, this is the endonucleus. Just emulsify it, go at a deeper plane, and again go through the substance of the nucleus for a distance, and then chop this heminucleus into two halves. Yes, it has divided completely into two pieces. Now I tilt this piece and emulsify it. See how beautifully it is getting emulsified. This no piece, no nuclear piece is running out here and there. This is the other piece. Hold it and start emulsifying it. See there's no nuclear piece is running here and there. The whole thing is just around the tip and it is getting emulsified and engulfed. Now this is the other heminucleus and here it is. Go through this for a distance and then chop it. And now, I tilt it a bit. At this time, I found that the antechamber is quite deep and the posterior capsule has gone far behind. So, I didn't think of I will scaffold in this case very slowly taking time looking here and there all around seeing the posterior capsule how far it is and emulsify the pieces. No nuclear piece is allowed to come into the anterior chamber. They are in the bag and I am in the plane of anterior capsule. And now this is the last portion of this hard nucleus. Intermittent application of energy. Now I remove the chopper and emulsify this hard nucleus. See how beautifully the nucleus came out. 
There is a piece of nucleus just in front of the main incision. We must remove it first before cleaning the cortical matter. Yes, if you see a small nuclear piece, remove it first. Otherwise, it can get lost somewhere under the iris and you may find it difficult to find it out later. So I introduce the Simco cannula. Go near this nuclear piece and squat it out. And now as I try to remove the cortical matter, I found genular weakness between 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock and there was a small genular dialysis at around 5.30 o'clock. So I removed the cortex very gently, very gentle pull and Simco offers very gentle suction. So in cases with weak genule, it is safer to use Simco cannula than a bimanual irrigation aspiration. So the cortical cleanup is in progress very gently the cortex is being cleaned you can see some air bubbles sticking to the corneal endothelium and see those air bubbles are not moving it means the turbulence inside the anterior chamber is negligible these air bubbles can be called sentinel air bubbles. And now viscoelastic substance is injected and this is a CTR to support the bag. The leading end of the CTR goes into the capsular bag. And now see I have two instruments. Macpherson's in my right hand and the forceps in my left hand and I am feeding it into the capsular bag. And now I take the Macpherson's in my right hand and the Sinsky hook in my left hand. Hold it very close to the trailing end go into the anterior chamber and now introduce the Simco through the side port and go at a deeper plane and the CTR goes into the capsular bag. And now the intraocular lens is implanted. As usual these patients are economically distressed and they cannot afford hydrophobic intraocular lenses. So this is a hydrophilic foldable intraocular lens which is very economic in India. And now the lens is nicely placed in the capsular bag and now is the time to remove the viscoelastic substance. I used the B hex forceps to remove the B hex hexagonal device and for applying the device the same forceps B hex 23 gauss forceps was used and now after removing the B hex hexagonal people expander thorough cleaning of the anterior chamber 
and the capsular bag is done to remove the viscoelastic substance. In this case, it was 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now, this is irrigation and aspiration for removal of viscoelastic substance. And now, we are towards the end of the surgery. Dear colleagues, in challenging cases like this, the main thing is our intuition, our patience, and be slow. If you are a first surgeon, be slow, look all, all around, always maintain the depth of the anterior chamber, always maintain the position of the tip of the phaco handpiece, see how far is the posterior capsule, see the behavior of the capsular bag, don't do a lot of lateral separation of the nuclear pieces, don't stress the jonule. Do very gentle suction. This is the final step from the anterior chamber and conclude the case. So we had these three challenges in this case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with great surgical skills.